Battle droids were the infantry soldiers of the CIS, or Separatists, used for their humanoid form, which allowed them to operate weapons and machinery, and also their low cost, which could increase production. But what if I told you that they were battle droids before and after the Clone Wars, with unique designs like the Sky Troopers of the Eternal Empire in Legends, and even the terrifying custom red droid used by Snap Wexley, known as Mr. Bones. And I'll leave it up to you to figure out why he was called that. And here I thought this mission would be unpleasant. Starting around 25,000 BBY, Zim the Despot had his own guardian corpse, also known as Zim war droids, that were humanoid in form and nearly twice the height of a standard protocol droid, which is also the same size as a human. That is the protocol droid. These guys were much bigger. They were influenced by Rakatan droid designs. The highest ranking of the droids called the Crimson Condo Tears, not even gonna try and say that right, used force energizing dynamos like the ricotta before them, which basically meant the technology was driven by the force, and thick armored plating with a reflective surface to deflect blaster bolts and also reinforced stress points were advantages of these guys. Chemical and energy weapons like ancient heat beams and particle dischargers were built into the arms and hands of the droids, and these ancient droids were very tall and bulky with the skull emblem of Zim on their chest plates with a box-like head and blocky feet too. Apparently they could be summoned by like horns of some kind which doesn't really make sense to me because you'd think if they have the technology to make these complex droids they could use something better than like a horn. With that said it is still crazy to me that they could make these kinds of droids all this far back on the timeline. So yeah I think Star Wars really does have to explore some of the early lore and legend stuff as far as how technology worked back then. However the recon constituted Sith Empire also had its own army of droids, which it used in its many conquests after the Great Hyperspace War. One of them was the PD-44 droid, aka the DX-2 Dominator droid, which resembled an early version of the Droidica, 3,630 years older to be exact, and this model was stationed on Tural 5 during the Cold War, as well as the Coronet city of Corellia. And when I say the Cold War, no I'm not talking about that thing with Russia and the 60s and 50s, I'm referring to the one from Star Wars. It appeared in the Old Republic game during a trooper class mission to Corellia, and it also had one red eye in the center, as well as many pointy legs with red joints, and also two lasers on each arm, again very similar to the destroyer droids of uh, later years. In a cinematic for the game, we can see them waddling around, so I'm not exactly sure whether or not these guys rolled but I am sure that this is seen in the game at some point if I had to guess. Also other droids of the Sith Empire include the Mark 7 experimental prototype assassin droid, the NRO2, Darth Scrabus's HK droid, and lastly the M1 4X droid, which was itself armed with blasters, grenades, rockets, and a flamethrower. So is it just me or does this droid seem like a good guy to hang out with? I mean, he feels like the type of friend you keep around for security, but no one really talks to. The M14X was designed to be loyal and very patriotic, as it would go to any length to destroy the enemies of the Republic that manufactured it. The largest droid was initially made by the Republic, but was briefly used by the Sith Empire, and found its origins when the project was abandoned due to the power core not activating. This droid was 654 pounds and was covered with white plating with red markings and yellow sensors. So obviously it is some sort of Republic droid even though it is labeled as a Sith Empire droid. I think the thing is that it was just used very briefly by them but yeah. So I mean the Sith Empire already had those really cool troopers but then they have to throw on the bow droids on top of it so yeah, that seems like a really cool faction the more I learn about it. Next up, the Sky Troopers were a battle droid used by the Eternal Empire and later the Eternal Alliance that were manufactured on the planet Zakul and also on Star Fortresses because they replaced most of the Zakul organic military. The standard troopers were fitted with a blaster rifle and rocket boosters on the rear of its torso. Also, they had flamethrowers for burning down obstacles in their paths, or I should say attempting to burn down obstacles in their paths because, as you know with droids, they're not always very reliable. 
A variant of these rambunctious rapscallions was the heavy skytroopers intended for planetary assaults, like the invasion of Voss, also the siege troopers which were more powerful and tall enough to face a walker. So yeah, these kids basically just look like huge mech suits, except they're not suits, they're just droids. And can you even imagine a separatist droid facing off against a walker? Yeah, that's not happening. Oh wait, tri droids, that's right. I believe the skytroopers were about human sized with rifle and gray arbor with glowing blue sections as well and were very important around 3600 BBY so yet again another old head. Dr. Juvard Illip Agurab reprogrammed the droids at the Overwatch control on Zakul after the Eternal Alliance rose from the Eternal Empire and these mindless soldiers were sent out over the different planets for expansion of the Alliance. Also, the Skytroopers had helmets that more closely resembled Stormtroopers than other battle droid models. They weren't just like some random machine piece that looks nothing like a human. They basically looked like people in suits, but they were in fact droids. And fun fact before I talk about the B-1 battle droids everyone knows, did you know that the helmets of the standard battle droids were originally in the Phantom Menace designed off of the Stormtrooper helmet, but just readjusted? And that's just one of the many cool details you can find in the making of episode one, the Phantom in his book. And currently I'm actually reading through the making of books like episode one, two, and three. Unfortunately though, I've had like no time from YouTube and stuff this year. So even though I got that, I think at the beginning of January, I'm literally like, 100 pages into the first one and this is like a picture book we're talking about pretty much so that is pretty sad but i do really like those books a lot definitely would recommend them back to the video though b1 bow droids were designed originally by Bactoid combat automata and also the Bactoid armor workshop who would go to the geonosians themselves for the production of the droids after darth sidious funded poggle the lesser millions of droids were manufactured for the trade federation among the factories of Geonosis such as the one destroyed in the Clone Wars, which I believe is also the one that Obi-Wan is uh, looking into and also the just droid factory scene from Attack of the Clones period but I'm not exactly sure on that detail. And it's safe to assume that the Geonosians modeled the bow droids off of themselves since they look insanely similar, almost like an organic version. It's almost like that was done on purpose. Yeah, that's right, random person in the comments. I beat you to it before you could correct me, but seriously though, I do kind of get tired of the, um, actually, comments, if you know what I'm saying. Yeah. But yes, the Geonosians were originally what the Nemodians of the Trade Federation were going to look like as organic versions of their own droids, before George scrapped that idea and later used it for the Geonosians. And going back to what I said about the Stormtrooper pattern, the helmets did start out as that in concept art, which would later morph into the normal look we now well know. And apparently this was done to show an evolution of the evil side of galactic powers over the span of the movies. However, I'm glad this was changed with this story as we later find out that if anything the separatists turned into the rebellion and the republic turned into the empire and yes i know the rebels aren't an exact descendant of the cis but they do have similarities when it comes to beliefs and somebody please tell me if you know otherwise but i believe we never get to see any prototype versions of the battle droids before the final b1s this is kind of disappointing because the only thing I have to now go off of for this video is concept art, which just isn't the same. And I was kind of hoping in the thumbnail to have a, you know, prototype version of the B1 on the left side, but it's fine. In the field, these guys used E5 blaster rifles and wore Comlink booster packs. They were also able to operate in space as we see in the Clone Wars, and they would never surrender, but also treated self-preservation important enough to escape when necessary, and the droids were clumsy and intelligent compared to other troopers. And just because I say that doesn't mean I like it. But the overwhelming numbers of bow droids certainly made up for it as they would usually kind of take control of battles by overwhelming the clone troopers. A 631 series droid that was inferior was also modeled, but so was the Oom model series, which was made to become standardized and was much more intelligent. Hands up, Jedi. 
Mr. Bones, or Bones as his abbreviated name like R2 or 3PO, was a highly modified B1 from the canon series Star Wars Aftermath, one that I personally have been reading for the past few months on book 3 right now, but it was painted red and had a murderous personality put in place by Temin Wexley, which by the way took me a long time before I found out it's the same guy that's barely in the sequels that no one remembers other than he died in 9, but anyway, Bones always serves as the comic relief to lighten up the mood as he is funny from the random urges to eliminate all enemies threatening his master. Even if it is a friend or family member of Temin, he will still be okay with just killing them. Other than that group of droids from Rebels, almost all B1s were shut down by Vader after his killing of the Separatist Council. He had the bones of birds, fish, and other animals connected to his body, and limbs of some which were jagged and one of his arms was replaced with a virus. Blade. Half of the face was made up of a red telescoping eye, and Mr. Bones also had a sharp beak to resemble a bird of prey. I know that that's one term, and I know there's, and I know there's that one Terminator droid from the thumbnail, but I don't want to be too close to Eckhart's video, so just watch his if you really want to find out about those guys. I just thought they looked cool. And yeah, that's really most of the important battle droids that are in the Star Wars timeline. But anyway, that's it for this video. You can subscribe if you want to. No. No. I upload every Friday and sometimes on Sunday too at 5 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Also, I post shorts on Saturday, but uh, yeah. See ya.